All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Balfang radio. Balfangs are pretty popular. And this one is the, let me get it in there, the UV5R5. And so this is one of the variants in the UV5R series. And there's a lot of confusion about these because some Balfangs are made by Balfang and some Balfangs are knocked off and made by other companies. So when you buy a Balfang radio, there are inherent quality issues that you can get as a result of a dodgy supply chain. I think that's the best and politest way to say it. Some of these have spurry submissions that make them not legal for use. Uh, some people get upset because they do have the ability to transmit out of band. And when I say out of band, I'm talking about the amateur radio bands. And they do have some problems with their front end receiver with desensitization issues where stronger signals not in, on your intended frequency can cause overloading of the front end and cause these to deafen and not receive well. All that said, they're wildly popular, priced at around $25 to $35. They make tons of accessories that are affordable and interchangeable with other UV5R models. This one is clean. It's legal for use in that respect. And um, I like it. So based off of that, we started doing some Cyanide measurement tests here at the Smoke and Ape Studios. Yeah, if you're working on a project that requires fabrication services, I'd encourage you to check out PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com has a variety of services that may meet your needs. From PCB design and even assembly to 3D printing and CNC milling, they've got you covered. PCBWay.com even offers a module store where you can buy parts or components that you might need for your project. And if you've got questions, PCBWay.com has answers on their help portal. Go ahead and check them out and see what they can do for you. Uh, Cyanide tests are a signal, noise, and distortion test where we take a look at filtering out some of the noise and distortion to hear an audible signal coming out of the speaker or out of the speaker mic uh, jack, which is what we're going to do, that is discernible and detectable by the human ear. And typically we look at around a 12 dB audio signal to do that. Now different manufacturers will publish a standard for their radio that tells you what input signal strength should be when uh, getting this this Synad reading, the desired 12 dB. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the manual. I could not find the manual for the UV5R5, so we're going to look at the UV5R, and that should be close enough. And then we're going to do some testing to see if this radio sensitivity is close to the published standard for the UV, UV5R series. So stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so in order to do this test, we are going to generate a signal here using our Tiny SA Ultra. I've got tons of videos on using the Tiny SA Ultra and how to use the signal generator fe feature, so you can check those out and uh, learn a little bit about it if that's what you want to do. We're going to take the signal and we're going to feed it into a 40 dB attenuator to lower the signal strength that's coming out of the Tiny SA. We do that so we don't have to stress the Tiny SA by having a signal that's super low. Typically, we're looking at around a negative 120 dB, which is difficult uh, for signal generators to produce uh, reliable signals at that level, so we use an attenuator to help us get there. And I'll show you how to adjust for the attenuator in the Tiny SA. The signal's going to come out, and it's going to go straight into the antenna connection on our UV5R. Now, you can open these up, and you can attach wires to your speaker. We're not going to do that. We're going to use the external uh, speaker connection here. We're feeding this into a sound card on my computer, and we're going to use some software to derive to our Synad measurement. So here is page 17 from the Balfang manual, and you can see under 15.3 our receiver specifications. The first one is receiver sensitivity. It says 0.2 UV, so that's 0.2 microvolts, which is pretty low, is what's required at 12 dB of Synad. So one of the things people will say is, is that, well, what the heck is 0.2 UV? We use this calculator here, and I put in uh, 0.2 microvolts at a 50 ohm impedance, and that's what we're going to be using here. And that gives us a dBm rating. So that is decibels in reference to a microvolt. And this is going to be negative 120.9 or negative 121. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to test this. We're going to use some software to make it a little bit easier to see, and I will come back as soon as that's set up. 
Okay, we're set up with two pieces of software here. You can see the TinySA screen capture software, and that'll make it easy for folks to follow along should you want to do a test like this at your house. And then we have the Synad meter uh, right next to that. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to set our test frequency. So when I do that, I'm going to hit set at the frequency level. I'm going to go 146.52 megahertz and that is going to be our test frequency. And so that should be set. Now you can see below that is the level setting and set for negative 18.1 dBm. So the first thing we're gonna do is come down to external gain. We're gonna highlight that. We're gonna pick negative 40 because we have a 40 dB attenuator. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click that. And that just dropped from negative 18.1 to negative 58.1. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to come over here and we want to hit set next to our level. And when I do that, I'm going to pick 121, but I want to make that a negative. Don't forget to make that a negative. Injecting a signal that's stronger than expected into your radio's antenna port is a recipe for disaster. And then I'm going to do times one. And now we are at negative 121 dBm. Below that is a setting for mod. This stands for modulation. So I don't know why they cut it short like that. They didn't need to. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on mod. And then I'm going to pick FM. Now below here are some more settings. And you can see our FM deviation is set for 3 kilohertz. And that's fine. Depending upon the setting that you have in that deviation may impact your synad reading. The other thing I have on here is my Valfang is set to wide open squelch. The squelch is set to zero. I do that as a baseline. Uh, your results may vary, but uh, that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit back. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And now we are injecting a signal. Now if you look at our synad meter on the screen you can see that it jumped to right around our, uh, our 12. Um, it's, it's bouncing around a little bit. It looks like we're going from 11.7, somewhere up to around close to 13 or the high 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is a pass. I didn't expect it to be this easy. I thought we were going to have to manipulate this a little bit. Uh, as you can see, when I add a uh, strength to my signal, here we go, we just went up to 119. You can see our audio DB level has gone up to around 15 or 16 on the screen. If I go ahead and I drop this back down to 121, which is where we were expecting, we're right around 12. And if I continue to make my signal weaker, it starts to go down. So here's negative 122, and it looks like we're really reading somewhere around the 810. Let's go to 123. And uh, now we've dropped down to around a 7.5 or an 8. So that uh, passes that test. Now, what I'm not saying when we do these tests is this radio has a uh, very good, strong receive. What I'm saying is, is that it meets the standards as specified in the user manual. Now, given we use the user manual for the UV5R, not the UV5R5, I suspect that the readings are strongly the same. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hit stop. We're going to turn this off and we're going to set our frequency to one in the uh, 70 centimeter band or 440 megahertz. So we're just going to go four, three, two dot one megahertz. And I need to go ahead and I need to change my frequency on the radio. And now that that is done, we're not injecting a signal right now, and you can see in the Synad meter that we are around a negative dB value of around 1, but it's bouncing around a little bit. So everything else in here is going to remain the same. Let's just go ahead and turn this on and see what happens. So turning it on, you can see that our reading is pretty high at around 16 or 17. So that's really exceeding our rating. Let's go ahead and drop this down. Remember, this is supposed to be around 121. Now we're at negative 124. Uh, we're still above uh, the 12 dB audio tone. So let's go ahead and drop it down to 125. And that looks to be about right on the money. So this one's actually uh, negative 4 dB better. 
So when we take a look at negative uh, 3 dB, that's around twice the power. So this is a pretty positive, pretty good signal. What this doesn't address is uh, adjacent signal rejection. And so maybe that's a test we'll do in a different video at a different time. But I just wanted to show you this, how we do it, and then maybe you can play along uh, at your location at home. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.